first night in the new syndicate water then. And as you can see, it's a large piece of water that we've got this time. This venue's in Nottinghamshire, and it has taken me quite a while to get down here. Normally I stick to waters that are about 45 minutes drive from work or, or where I live, but this one's taken me an hour 15 to get down the A1. Pretty busy traffic, but it's a little bit further than I normally travel as well, so um, we'll see how we get on with the place, because it might be a little bit difficult to do overnight in between work on here, but um, at the moment I'm really excited to be here. I've got four rods out and I arrived about five o'clock this evening and came through the gate and didn't even get a chance to drive all the way around the lake because as soon as I got to this area I started, one, started seeing one or two fish boshing out in front of here so it made sense to me for my first night to just set up on where, where there are fish showing and I did find out as well from one or two of the lads that there have been a few fish out of this end of the lake over the weekend so it makes sense to do my me, me first trip here. I'm only staying till sort of eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I've got to be off uh, for work again. But um, I've got four rods out, as you can see. And found some nice features out there as well. We've got uh, some ups and downs, some plateaus and some bars, etc. So what I've chosen to do really is to, to spread the rods out. I'm allowed to use four rods on this venue. And the two rods on the left-hand side, I've got on a, a plateau that's about 12 foot deep with a few sort of drop-offs either side of it and a few sort of gravelly bars and you know bits and pieces on the bottom that sort of look ideal really for for carp because it's surrounded by a lot of deep water that drops down to sort of 23 24 foot and the right hand set that's a really exciting area over there that's um in 11 foot of water both those rods are on another plateau which i believe is is one of the best features on the lake so that's uh, that's looking really good for, for tonight because I have seen a couple of fish bosh over the top of there as well. Now both the areas I've, I've not really put too much bait out. I've just got the old uh, throwing stick and put about 10 or 15 baits around each each rod and um, just fished a single bottom bait over the top. So we'll see how we get on. It is the middle of May when waters like this do start to sort of turn on because it's, as I said it's, it's quite deep and I do find that a lot of the deeper waters they do tend to, to start switching on a little bit later than the other venues and um, as I say this weekend there was one or two fish that did get caught and uh, according to the locals that's the sign really that things are going to start to kick off on here so let's see how we get on but exciting times to be here. Well it's always nice to get your first fish from a new water and this old warrior been through the wars over the years, plenty of battle marks on him. This is my first fish from the big pit, so very happy indeed. No wonder it was a cold night last night. We've got a wall of fog in front of us, which I presume has come off the nearby river, but um, just about to start packing up. It's probably about half six in the morning now. Got a photograph of fish down there, which is in the retainer, which you can just see, which I've just had. I'm on four fish now. So I'm starting to put the pieces together a little bit. And uh, I'm only fishing overnight. So I've not done any days yet, I've not had a chance, but this is the fourth different uh, swim that I've fished. And this is the really the going swim, really. It's called the point. And what you've got out here is a, a large plateau, which drops down to sort of 11, 12 foot in places and that's the main area according to a lot of the locals that's uh, been doing a lot of fish lately. There's been I think 3.30s off there this week but I've not been able to get on it yet at all and um, I dropped on any last night, I turned up about half seven at night, it was just going dark and uh, well say so just going dark, Just it, it was dark because there was a lot of rain about but um, some lad was in here and he just pulled out just at the right time and I, uh, I dropped in here and um, Literally just put three rods out onto the plateau, the two on the left and the one on the left of the right hand set and scattered a little bit of bait about because I have been getting fish really on sort of half a dozen, a dozen or so baits around each hook bait but uh, the right hand rod which I literally just blasted into no man's land and I presume that sort of fell into about 20-25 foot of water which I, I know has been doing a few fish for one or two of the lads and uh, that was the rod that went, it went about 15-20 sort of minutes ago and I set a little fight and got a fat little common on the end which looking at it, it's probably about 23, 24 pounds, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's nice to get another one before work. I'm still feeling my way in at the moment but uh, this little fat is weighing in at 22 pounds. And it's come on a single hook bait just blasted into the middle of nowhere which 
fell in about 22, 25 foot of water, something like that. But it feels like an absolute block of ice. It's so cold at the moment for the middle of May. Um, we've got a fog that's come off the, the nearby river. But fingers crossed it's going to warm up in a little bit because I've actually got the chance to fish all day today. So hopefully I might get to know a little bit more about this lake because it gives me a chance to sort of get the marker rod out and cast it about a bit more than just doing a few hours here and there when I'm doing the, the overnighters. But yeah, nice. Well, it's a cracking day today and there's been one or two fish cruising around on the surface so I've got two rods out and zigs at the moment but nothing's come to them and from what I can gather this lake doesn't really respond too well to zigs which you know I am surprised about that because it's quite a deep water and uh, it's quite a clear water as well and what tends to happen on these kind of venues is the fish are obviously sight feeding quite a lot up in the upper layers so um, I'll persevere with them at the moment. Probably needs a bit of slop going out there and stuff like that really, more than anything. But at the moment I've only just put uh, two sort of lone uh, zig bugs out there, so we'll see if anything develops from it. First 30 from the lake, it's weighed in just at 32 pounds. And, uh... Now that is a good fish. A very good fish. Hard to say how big he is, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. If he's one of the big boys. Yeah, that's a... That looks like it could be the one with a lump on its side, which is about 38, 39 pound. He's done 40 in the past. That fish has. He's got a right big growth on his side. And that's how I know that it's that fish, if you can see it. Well, they say that patience is a virtue, and I've spent two hours stalking fish close in, in them reeds, and this absolute peach just turned up right on time. I'm starved. I'm ready for some dinner, and I was thinking about sort of heading off back to the car to get myself sorted so it's nice to have this one well you'll have to take it from me but conditions out there are a lot worse than they probably look from this video it's that really fine driving rain that soaks everything in seconds but it's perfect conditions for a big water like this it's six o'clock in the morning and we're getting towards the end of june now and um, i've been up for probably about an hour and a quarter something like that when i was rudely woken by a lovely mid-20 common which we'll have a look at in a minute but um, I was in two minds about whether to come down last night because the conditions have been really bad on the roads I've had an awful lot of work going on as well but um, something in the back of my mind was telling me to get down here and I had a good drive around the lake there's a couple of three lads on and um, normally I would have gone for the, the bottom end of the lake because there was a really strong wind blowing from the top end straight down the lake and I actually did see quite a few fish showing in that area but I do tend to think from the, the few weeks that I've been on this water now that a lot of the shoal fish are, are down that, uh, that bottom end and the main three which I'm trying to target are sort of hanging around this middle part of the lake. Um, Butthead, the big one in, in here, was caught only about a month or so ago from that far bank over there and that's its only capture uh, this year and it was also um, the same area as well out here where the other two big ones in the water have been caught from. So. You know, it does look like I'm going to probably hedge my bets in this area over the next few weeks. It, it certainly looks a good area. There's quite a few nice features out here. We've got a lovely bay round to the left here. There was quite a few fish in here at the weekend. Um, I myself had a couple of fish to low 20s out here. Another lad had three out there. 
but there's a nice strip of weed that runs from that bay right round the front of this swim to about 15 yards out where it drops down to 8 foot and it looks like the perfect interception point so I've got a couple of rods out there but the main feature really is a plateau that's out at about 110 120 yards range where it drops from 17 foot down to 22 and that's actually the area where I caught my fish from this morning but um, that area I do know has done one or two of the, the good the better fish in here so um, it does look like the area where I'm going to try and concentrate on because it does look a perfect interception point especially when the winds blowing from that top end down the lake so um, you know I can see myself getting a nice baited area going out there and, um, and trying to fish it as regularly as I can you can also fish that spot from that far bank over there but that particular bank at the moment it's uh, it's very muddy over there in these conditions and only the other day I managed to get my car stuck around there so I've decided to, to sort of stick to this side for the time being until the weather uh, holds off but um, it looks like this this sort of weather fronts in for the next few days so I can see myself getting down here again tonight and possibly tomorrow night to try and see where we go but um, you know for the time being I've got to start getting packed up and heading off to work but uh, let's have a quick look at this fish on the bank which is, I'm sure you'll agree is an absolute stunner it's a mid-20 common and it fought like uh, like a donkey because some deep water out there and when you, you've got a fish like that plodding around in those sort of depths it does feel a lot heavier from time to time as it makes its way to the bank and uh, there was at one point when I thought oh is this one of the better three but uh, either way I'm very happy to, to see it in my net so let's have a look at it on the bank. Well I contemplated not coming yesterday because of the weather we've had driving rain all day all over the country it was terrible driving conditions to get here and uh, setting up was just as bad it was really heavy rain and I've been holding on to the bivvy all night wondering if one of these rods is going to go but it's absolutely pristine common at first light this morning proves that you've got to be in it to win it so I'm absolutely buzzing now just got to get packed up and head off back to work. Right then, take a look at this because this is what we're competing against as anglers. That is the lid off the pan that I've just eaten my dinner out of and it's been in the margins for probably five or ten minutes and there's literally hundreds of tiny little snails all over it. And there's literally millions of them all over the lake bed. You can't probably see it in this video but to take it from me, there's little tiny black dots all over the place. And that's the staple diet of the carp, these tiny little snails, there's thousands of them all over the place and it's no wonder the fish in here are packing the weight on and avoiding capture because uh, when you're competing against that there's no reason to pick up anglers baits. This one's going to be my last fish of the summer because I'm about to start heading off on my summer holidays now for a couple of weeks and to be fair it's come just in time because the last couple of weeks have been pretty hard going on here for me, I've not had anything at all so uh, for this to be my last session before I go off on the summer it's come right at the right time because I'm now full of confidence and I'm brimming to get back down here in a couple of weeks time but so far so good on the pit, I've had a good couple of months, I've had some lovely fish and most of all, I've learnt lots of lessons which I can hopefully put to good use when I get back down here in a few weeks' time.